Hello, church family. Happy Sabbath. Thank you all so much for tuning in with us at our Father's House of Worship today. Pastor Estes Taylor is going to be bringing us the message titled, Rebuild, Restore, and Revive. I am definitely looking forward to hearing the message that the Holy Spirit has placed on his heart today. And just before Pastor Estes comes on, I do have a few announcements to share with you all. So we want to continue to remind you, utilize our website, www.ofhow.org. From our website, you can follow us on our various social media platforms. But most importantly, if you scroll to the bottom of the page, there is a contact us. So if you have a need or if you have a prayer request or if you just want to get in touch with us, this is an excellent way to get a hold of us. So just scroll to the bottom, click on the contact us and send us a message and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Also, our app is available for download on both the Apple Store and the Google Play Store. We are so excited that this is available for our members to use. So if you haven't had a chance yet to download the app, go to your app store, search OFHOW, and you can install the app. From the app, you can access all of the sermons. You can donate to our ministry. You can um, also write on our prayer wall. The prayer wall is an excellent way to stay in touch with the church family members. Let us know what's going on in your life. Let us know what you need prayer for. Or even let us know how God is showing up in your life and give us a testimony on how he's answered your prayer. So be sure to go on and take a few minutes and download the app so that you can start using that if you haven't already. Um, next, if you would like to donate to our ministry or pay your tithes and offerings, besides using our website and app, you can also text the word GIVE to 844-278-2541. You can also mail in your donations to the P.O. box that is scrolling across the screen below. And lastly, if you are in need or you know someone who is in need, our food pantry is now open. We have so much food to give away. We have baby items like diapers, and we also have some women's clothing to be given away. So if you need something or you know someone who needs something, please give us a call at 619-472-3900. You can set up an appointment. You can find out when we are giving the food away. That way you can get everything that you need or connect those that you know who are in need to get what they need. Um, so that's all the announcements that I have today. And Pastor Estes is coming up next, bringing us the message. I hope that you all enjoy the message. I hope that you hear it with an open heart and open mind and get receive everything that God has for you today. Enjoy this beautiful Sabbath day. I love you all so much, church family. God bless you and take care. See you next time. Thank you very much, Christy, for our welcome. As Christy said, a uh, message for today is rebuild, restore, revive. Look, I know I'm not the face you're usually used to seeing at noon, uh, but Pastor Robbins, the good son that he is, he went to go see his mother. He's got his vaccination. He's got a shot. Pre-COVID, he went to go see her every few months. Now it's been over a year. And so pray for him as he's going to check in on his mother and see that she is doing okay. Pray that he travels and he comes back safely. Now on that note, um, with our topic, Rebuild, Restore, Revive, we're, we're getting into the spring time of year, right? That's when the flowers grow back. That's when the grass comes back. Look at our, our lives and, and our world. Everyone's been in their hole and their cracks and their homes. Now people are starting to crawl out of their holes, right? People are starting to come out. I think about here in California, we were one of the first states to shut it all down. We were the first state to shut it all down. But now our governor says we're opening it back up. Uh, people can start watching sporting events live again. Uh, you've probably already eaten in a restaurant already. People are getting out of the house. Schools are now fully open. And so we are getting to that place where we are restoring. They want to restore the economy and revive the way of life and rebuild. And I want to focus on us, us, the church. Where are some places that we need to restore, rebuild, revive, reinvigorate. I, I had about 10 re's I wanted to use in the title, uh, but what, what, what do we want to do there? What do we need to, you know, bring back to life? And so 
Look with me if you would. Uh, we're going to hang out in the book of Nehemiah, but before we go to Nehemiah, let's look at the book of Ecclesiastes pretty quickly. Go to with me Ecclesiastes chapter 3. And it's a familiar scripture. Even if you don't read the Bible, this scripture is very much used in common everyday life. Uh, but Ecclesiastes chapter 3. And before I pray, just read with me Ecclesiastes chapter 3. And I'm going to start in verse 1. And it says, There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to rebuild. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to regather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, and finally verse 8, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. But we see in this verse, it talks about these back and forths, tearing down and building up, war and peace, speaking and silent. And I would like to recommend that we are in a place where God is calling for this springtime in our season in the springtime in our lives, we're seeing it happening, opening up. Uh, it's it's going to happen regardless. Spring is happening. And so as a church, I want to challenge us, rebuild, restore, revive. Pray with me if you would. Thank you, Father in heaven, for all that you've done for us. Thank you for this chance to look into your word. Speak to us and let us know what it is that you're calling us to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me ask you, let me just, okay, let me just, usually in a sermon, Pastors have a part of the sermon that they call the appeal. It usually comes at the end of the sermon. And in the appeal, we ask, you know, does anyone want to give their heart to God? Does anyone want to do dedicate all that? I'm going to break protocol and I need my appeal now. So I know we just started. I know I haven't built up any type of equity to ask you for anything yet, but I'm going to give my appeal now. I want to know, does anyone see a place in their life where you want to rebuild? Does anyone see a place in your life where you want to commit to restoring? Does anyone see a place in your life where you hear God saying there needs to be a revival? Maybe it's your marriage. Maybe it's your finances. If, if I can step on some toes and offend some people, maybe, maybe it's around here. Maybe it's the gut. You know, I hear people talk about they put on their COVID-10. Might have been your COVID-20, 30. I don't know. You know, have you, have you not been working out anymore? Have you been in the couch? Have you been in the sweatpants for so long that you haven't noticed the inches as much. What do we need to rebuild? Is there anyone out there who says, I know that I need to commit to rebuilding something? Maybe it's relationships with people you haven't seen in a while. It could be habits. Uh, you know, our eating habits have probably slipped off or gotten bad. Or maybe it's not things that are COVID related, but maybe just things in your life that you need to rebuild. Things that need to be restored, revived. Maybe it's the Christian you were when you first came into your faith. And over the years, you've kind of gotten comfortable and complacent. Maybe when you were younger and bolder, you spread the love of Jesus to everyone. You were on fire. And now you're at this place where you've kind of gotten complacent. Maybe when you first came in, you know, you studied your word and you did these things. What are the places in your life where there is room for restoration? What are the relationships in your life where there's room for restoration? What are the habits in your life? where there's room for revival? What are the broken places in your life where there's room to rebuild? Just do me a favor, get those in your mind right now. You've probably already been thinking about them. In fact, before now, I'm praying that God is already starting to show them to you. You probably already feel the wind coming into your life from the cracks in the wall. What are those places that need to be rebuilt? Who are those people in your life that need to be restored? What are those practices that need to be revived? And my appeal today is, is there anyone today who wants to commit to getting those done? And the reason I'm doing the appeal first is because if you're not really looking to rebuild or restore or revive, you might not feel this the same way. But to those of you who are saying, yes, I want to rebuild, I want to restore, I want to revive, I want to jive right in with you. 
because I've been seeing God calling me to those places in my life and I want to share what he has with me with you. And so we just read in Ecclesiastes about the time for down and up. And I know there was a time where the earth was quiet during our pandemic. But as God has said, it's time to rebuild. And people said, are we going to come back from the pandemic? That's the way God has created our world. There's ups and there's downs. And so go with me to Nehemiah. Let's walk through Nehemiah. And as you're getting to Nehemiah, let me tell you a little bit of the backstory of Nehemiah. So Israel, right, started with Abraham. God said, Abraham, you're going to have some kids. They're going to outnumber the stars of the sky. It eventually happened. They were slaves in Egypt. Fast forward, Moses led them out. Joshua took them into the promised land. From there, they had kings that sat on the throne like David and Solomon, and they were a great and mighty nation. At one point, the Bible talks about them being the richest nation in the world and one of the strongest. However, they sinned. They turned away from God. Remember I asked you have some habits that you need to restore? They got out of some of the habits of the way they worship God and live their lives. They uh, let some of the things break down about how they didn't worship idols and those, those, those things needed to be rebuilt and, and, and all of these places in their lives happened. And as a result, you know what God did? He backed up. He said, if you don't want to roll with me, I'm not going to force you to, but that means you're on your own. And so all of a sudden, you know how it is when you're at the top, everybody's coming after you. And Israel was eventually conquered. Now we see throughout the Bible, they're conquered. They come back to God. God restores them. They're conquered, they come back to God, God revives them. They're conquered, they come back to God, and God keeps putting them back. He redeems them. Well, this time, they really turned from God. God gave it up, and not only were they conquered, their city was destroyed, their temple, their temple was destroyed. The walls were burnt down, everything was left to nothing. They spent 70 years captives in Babylon. Babylon got conquered by Medo-Persia. They were captives in the land. And now all of a sudden there's a new king, Xerxes, on the throne. And now he allows some of the people to start going back to Israel. The captives are going back home. And while this was happening, the people were there. And word got to Nehemiah that the people are going back home, but Jerusalem was in ruins. The wall around the city is nothing. Now back then, you couldn't have a city without a wall. People attacked. It wasn't civilized as we would call it today, right? And so, uh, you know, not like the wall they're talking about building on the southern border. This wall went around the entire city. Every city that was a city had a wall. Well, Jerusalem had no wall because it was burnt to the ground. It was literally rubble. And so because of this, Nehemiah said, how can we be the city of God and not be ashamed? We need a wall. And so Nehemiah said, I am going to go back to Jerusalem and we will build this wall. Nehemiah said, it is time to rebuild. Israel's shame is over. Let me ask you, do you recognize what needs to be rebuilt in your life? What is bringing you shame like Israel? Do you feel that need to rebuild? Do you have that desire to rebuild? And are you willing to do the work? Are you willing to build? If so, let's dive right in. So let's start with Nehemiah chapter 1, verse 4. And we'll see in the beginning of Nehemiah and, and, and how he got to this place of wanting and needing to, to rebuild their city and again, his friends came to him and they told him the lot of Jerusalem. And when he heard this, I'm picking up in verse four, chapter one, verse four. And he says, when I heard this, I sat down and wept. In fact, for days I mourned, fasted and prayed to the God of heaven. Verse five, then I said, O Lord, God of heaven, the great and awesome God who keeps his covenant and unfailing love with those who love him and obey his commands. Listen to my prayer in verse six. Look down and see me praying against you. Yes, even my own family and I, we have sinned. We have sinned terribly by not obeying your commands and your decrees and your regulations that you've given us. Please remember your servant Moses. And Nehemiah in the rest of this chapter cries out to God and he asks God to hear him. And if we jump down to verse 10, he said, the people you rescued by your great power and strong hand are your servants. O oh Lord, please hear my prayer. Listen to the prayers of those of us who delight in honoring you. And he says, please grant me success today. Are you committed to rebuilding in your life? Step one, you probably thought I was going to say something hard or something mighty or amazing, but no. Simple, humbly, are we willing to go to God? and ask them to rebuild us. We are talking about reopening our church. 
We're talking about doing so in May. We're saying it's time to get out. It's time to do it. I know we said April. We should probably reopen in April. We've been talking about this for quite a while, but it's time to do it. It's time to open up. It's time to restore. I know some of us are watching at home, but the community needs us to be there. Who is the time for you to minister to? Who is the time for you to reach out to? Who is the time for you to spread the love of Jesus to? Not just the church opening up the building, but the church, the people. And guess what? That's you. Who is the time for us to restore? What relationship, your marriage, your kids, your job, your, your, your COVID-20 that you put on? What is the time to get at? Number one, we gotta pray. We gotta ask God. Nehemiah said he fasted, he prayed, he called God out. You're awesome, you're mighty, you made a promise to us, and I am coming to you holding you at your word. I wanna know who's willing to go to God and say, you know what, God, you said you do it, and I'm calling you to the carpet. Are you a God of your word? Who is willing to go to God in belief and in faith, knowing that he has the power to do it? And so if I started off, I started off saying, who's, who's with me in that appeal? Who is with me to commit to rebuilding, to restoring, to reviving, to redeeming, to remaking, to renovating, whatever you want it to be? I need you to talk to God. I say, God, we're going to do this. I see the need. You put it in front of me. I see what you are calling me to do. God, I am expecting you to do it in my life with confidence, with boldness. God, I am expecting you to do it. Please, as Nehemiah said, please grant me the success today to do this thing. So that's number one. Number two, you need to have a heart and a desire for this change. Now, a lot of us want to look better. A lot of us want to maybe have that nice beach body. I live in San Diego by the beach and the summer's coming. And every summer I say, this is the summer I'm taking them by storm at the beach. Every summer I say, this is the summer when I walk on the beach, you know, my chest is gonna get the same attention as, as the muscle head down the way. No offense to any muscle heads out there. But, but, but I don't always wanna get up and do the push-ups. You know what I'm saying? I don't always wanna maybe cut back on the pizza and the, and, and the things that are hanging out in my midsection. How many of us want a change, but we are not committed to making the change? How many of us wanna be better off financially? How many of us are saying, this is the year I'm gonna stop renting and buy a house? But we still got those bad spending habits and savings habits. We, we haven't picked up the side hustle. We're still, you know, in our free time, not, not earning with that time. How many of us say, this is the year where, you know, I'm really gonna reach out and my kids and I are really gonna start, you know, reading a book together or doing something together, but we don't put that time in it. How many of us have a heart and a desire to change? Not wanna change, not see the need for the change, but a heart and a desire to change. Go with me to Nehemiah chapter two. And now Nehemiah is in Jerusalem. He showed up, he came, he talked to the king. He said, King, I wanna build the walls of Jerusalem. The Lord answered his prayer. He said, Lord, give me success today. And he went to the king and the king said, not only can you go back and rebuild Jerusalem, I'm gonna give you a letter to take to the person who's in charge of the force of the empire and I'm gonna give you lumber. And I'm also gonna give you guards to go with you, to escort you back. And the king gave him all the material he needed to build and the money he needed to build. And so now Nehemiah asked for that success. A lot of us have the tools that we need for the change, but now do you have the heart and the desire? So Nehemiah shows up in Jerusalem with all of this stuff. And so he talks to the people. And in verse 17, this is what Nehemiah says. Nehemiah chapter two, verse 17, he says, but now I said to them, he met with the leaders of Jerusalem. They walked around, they looked at the city, they looked at the walls. And in verse 17, now I said to them, you know very well what trouble we are in. Jerusalem lies in ruins and the gates have been destroyed by fire. Get this, he says, let us rebuild the walls of Jerusalem and end this disgrace. Then I told them about how gracious the hand of, the, of God had been to me and about the conversation of the things given to me by the king. It says, they replied at once, yes, let's rebuild the wall. So they began the good work. Nehemiah called them out. They said, we're in trouble. Look at this disgrace that we're in. I want to call some people out. Look at your life. <laughs> look at the disgrace that you're in. Go look in the mirror and <laughs> look at the disgrace that you're in. Look at the relationships. Look at your marriage. Look at your children. Look at the places in our lives that God wants more for us. Look at your bank account. Look at the disgrace that we are in. And I know we've been in a pandemic and I know we've been indoors and I know we have had things differently, but that's no longer an excuse. Look at our church. What kind of a difference are we making in the community? I know we haven't met under the same roof in a long time, 
But we fin to. It's gonna happen soon. And when we do, what are we gonna do? Are we gonna be business as usual? Or are we gonna come back stronger? I've heard people say, I am used to watching church online. I'm probably gonna keep watching online. No, it's time to rebuild. It's time to be more, to do more. Look at your lives. Look at the disgrace that we're in. We need to rebuild this and remove the disgrace from God's people that he has on us. And like Nehemiah told them, look at God's gracious hand. Look at all that he has given us. Look at how much more we can do. So I wanna ask that question again. To everybody in the beginning who said, yes, I am committing to rebuild my life. Yes, I've come out of a bad situation. Yes, I'm, I've come out of some bad things and I'm ready to rebuild. Now is the time. Who's willing to commit? Who has that desire to pray and ask God for the change confidently like Nehemiah? Number two, who has a heart and a desire to change? Number three, number three, you're not gonna like this one. The first one was easy, pray. The second one, just have that heart for change. Number three, I have to tell you this, you will have opposition. There will be haters. There will be people who hate. Now, if you decide I'm going to get up and serve God, we expect God to pave the way for us, right? Israel marched out of Egypt by God's mighty hand. And what happened? They ran into the Red Sea. There will be opposition. And I want to let you know that if you make a desire to change, the enemy is going to do everything he can to keep you in place. There's a, I didn't learn a lot in school. Um, as far as science and the laws of science and all of these things, but there's one that I remembered. It's called the law of inertia. Don't look down on me. Maybe you didn't learn that. It says an object in motion stays in motion and an object at rest stays at rest unless acted on by an outside force. I've got this computer sitting here. It's not going nowhere unless an outside force moves it, right? And so that's how our lives are. We are here. God wants to move us forward but the devil wants to keep us in place. And so if you commit to change, I guarantee you, you will have opposition. Go with me to Nehemiah chapter two and look at verses 10 and 19. We're still in verse two. So in verse 10, while Nehemiah was there and he declared to the people they're gonna rebuild and they started rebuilding, there were some people because the walls were down that weren't Israelites who had kind of moved in and thought that they owned the place. And in verse 10, it says, when Sanballat, the Hornite, and Tobiah, the Ammonite official, heard of my arrival, they were very displeased that someone had come to help the people of Israel. And then if you go down to verse 17, talking about these same two guys, it says, but now I said to them, you know, very, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, that second verse was verse 19. Jump down to verse 19. And he says, but when Sambalot and Tobiah and Gershom, the Arab, heard of our plans to rebuild, they scoffed contemptuously. What are you doing? And are you rebelling against the king, they asked? They said they are going to stop them from doing the work. They go on a little bit further, and they actually get a group of men together to attack them. They said, we are going to attack them with war and stop them from building. Because you make up your mind to build, you're going to find opposition. You know how it is. I want to eat better. I want to work out. It's going to be hard. It's, it's going to be tough. You're going to be in pain. I want to save more money means I got to cut back. I want to spend more time with God means I got to take time away from somewhere else. I want to go out and be a light and a witness. There's going to be opposition. But again, let's take it back to the top. Who raised their hand with me and said, I am committed to rebuilding. I am committed to this change. Who raised their hand and said, I am committed to doing the work. Who asked God for the success? If you are, you need to realize that it's not going to be easy. It's going to be an uphill battle. There are going to be some things that we have to face, some opposition. But guess what? It doesn't just stop there. Go to Nehemiah chapter 4. Look at me at verse 7 to 11. Nehemiah chapter 4, verses 7 to 11. And here, those same group of haters, those same people, it says that, but when Sanballat and Tobiah and the Arabite and the Arabs and the Ammonites and the Ashadites heard that the work was going ahead and that the gaps in the walls were actually being rebuilt and repaired. They were furious. They all made plans to come and fight against Jerusalem and to throw us into confusion. But we prayed to our God and guarded the city day and night. But then look at this, look at this. It goes a little bit further. Then in verse 10, so now they've got pressure from the outside. They've got haters from the outside trying to stop them. On the inside, it says, then the people of Judah, the Israelites, the ones working, they began to complain. The workers are getting tired and there is so much rubble to be moved. We will never be able to build these walls. 
by ourselves. There are going to be times where you're going to doubt yourself. There are going to be times where it will be hard. But the reason I wanted to stop there and make that point is because I want to make my last point. The key to victory is going to be easier than you think. The key to victory is going to be easier than you think. If you go to Nehemiah chapter 3, and I don't have time to read Nehemiah chapter 3, but it's kind of redundant. It kind of sounds the same way. If you read Nehemiah chapter 3, it talks about the city of Jerusalem. They take you on a tour walking around the city, the different gates, the different areas, the different parts of town. And it says place after place after place. I'll just jump in at verse 6. It says the old city gate was repaired by Josiah and his sons. And then the beams were laid by Maniah and his sons. And if you go back to, to, to now to verse 8, then next Isaiah and his sons, he was a goldsmith. He built the wall next to this gate. And then beyond him, the next group built. Here's how they were able to rebuild their city in record-breaking time. Everyone did the work right there. Everyone said, you know what? I'm going to rebuild the part of the gate right in front of my house. The next guy said, I'm going to rebuild the part of the gate from my house to your house. And everybody just went out and did their part. I, I've, I've joked about this before. You've probably heard me. In, I live in San Diego, right? They're going to announce we're going to build a new stoplight. This area used to have a stop sign. We want to put a stoplight there. And it takes them like a year and a half to put up a stoplight. You ever seen that? Or they say, you know what? We're going we're gonna to repair the sidewalk. And it's like six months later and they're working on the side. Why does there's all these trucks? There's traffic. Why does it take six months to put up a traffic light? <laughs> I don't know why. But I know that when these guys came together, they didn't all come and build a section at a time. Everyone said, I will be responsible for the part of the gate that's by my house. And when everyone rebuilt, and if you read through chapter 3, you go through every single verse. and all 32 verses, they say, this person rebuilt this. And the next person, they rebuilt that. And this person, he was a shepherd, and he rebuilt this. And the next person, he was a baker. And he, like, they, no one was qualified. No one was a construction worker. The next guy was a priest, and he rebuilt this. And, you know, the next guy, he was in child care. And, and you know, Keisha, she did nails, but she did the part by her house. And, uh, you know, Josh, he, he was a musician, but he did his part. And, and everybody just did their little part to rebuild the gate. What is your part? Maybe it's your marriage that you're committing to rebuild. You're like, you know what? I would love to rebuild my marriage, but my husband be tripping. I would love to rebuild my marriage, but my wife just really ain't about it. You know, what is your part? What do you need to own? Maybe it's your finances. What is your, you know, maybe if I got a, a raise, you know, maybe if I could find a, what is your part? Maybe it's in your community, your neighborhood. It's broken relationships. Maybe it's things that you see in our church that are wrong. What is your part? What is God calling you to do? Maybe before the pandemic, you came to church every week. You sat down in the pew every week. You watched every week. You got up every week and you left every week. Maybe it's time for you to get involved. Maybe it's time for you to do something. Maybe it's time for you to lead out in a ministry or start one. Or maybe bring a friend or a neighbor to church with you. What is your part? Listen, God already has the power for us to be successful. And if we pray, he'll hear us. In fact, you probably already see the places in your life where he is calling you to rebuild. You probably already see it. And so if he's calling you to do it, and he has the power, and he gives you all the tools like he did Nehemiah, what is your part? Are you willing to do your part? Don't worry about the bigger picture and everyone else. Where are you going to begin? What are you going to ask God to help you to do? How are you going to build? And if everyone does their part, like we saw the children of Israel, the gate was rebuilt in record time. I don't have time to go into all of it, but you read about how the enemy got together and joined a group together to attack. And you know what the people did? Nehemiah said, half of you will work and the other half will stand guard. And you know what else you read a little bit further it says? It says that everyone worked with one hand on their sword and the other hand on their tool. And God protected them. And they got all the work done. All that rubble they said they couldn't pick up. They got it done. Everything got finished. The gate was rebuilt. And in the end, there was a huge celebration. Continue to read Nehemiah. The whole city came together. They worshiped. They praised God. They had a huge feast. Listen, where do we need to be feasting about? What do we need to be rebuilding? What do we need to be restoring? What do we need to be doing? God is calling us to build. God is calling us to be more. God is calling us to put back up the walls. God is calling us to rebuild and to revive, to remake. God is calling us to reclaim some relationships. God is calling us. What are you willing to do? Now I'll ask it again. Do you feel God calling you to restore something in your life? And if you didn't before, do you now? As we prepare to 
open up our society, as we prepare to open up our church doors again, as we prepare to get back to what life might have been as normal. Maybe some of you, like Pastor Robbins, have travel plans. You're preparing for that next family gathering, whatever it might be. As it is time, don't just be a passive participant, but say, I'm going to rebuild. I'm going to remake this. I'm going to redo it. I'm going to have it go all the way. And you know what? God is waiting to redeem you every step of the way. And so I want to invite you now into that redemption, into that restoration, into that revival. Pray with me if you would. Thank you, Father God, for all that you've given us. Thank you, Lord, for all the opportunity that is waiting for us. Thank you, God, for all the tools that you are just anxious for us to take hold of and go and rebuild, Father God, and reclaim. Father God, thank you, thank you, thank you. Lord, let us move forward in faith in you. Let us believe that you've called us to do this thing, whether it be a relationship or a business or a ministry or whatever this place in our life or in our health or with our children's lives is. Let us go forward in faith. Let us grab hold of the tools. Let us push past the haters and the opposition and let us follow after you. Again, God, we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope I spoke to someone directly. I hope someone heard my heart. I hope that as we prepare to open up, you keep us in prayer. We'll have more announcements on that coming soon. And I hope that you go out and reclaim what it is that God wants to give to you. God bless, family.